Welcome to the Leadership Lounge, a place to kick back and listen as our experts dissect some of the biggest questions leaders face today. I'm Emma Coombe, Leadership Advisor in our London office, and today we're revisiting the topic of AI. Since our last episode on the topic in November last year, AI has morphed from a boardroom buzzword to a business imperative. In that time, leaders have had varying success with the technology. While some have sprinted ahead, others remain at the starting line. In today's episode, we aim to help you understand how you as a leader can not only keep pace with AI, but set the pace. So why is AI a leadership issue? What skills are important to help you unleash the potential of AI? And how do you overcome barriers that might be preventing you from acting? Our experts are here to share the latest insights they've been hearing from leaders on the front line about how to navigate the ever-evolving and complex AI landscape. But before we dive in, remember to share any burning questions you want our experts to answer by emailing redefiners at russellreynolds.com. We look forward to hearing from you. We'd first like to welcome Tuck Rickards, Leadership Advisor from Russell Reynolds Associates San Francisco office, into the conversation. He has been counselling senior leaders on digital transformation for over 25 years, so we're really looking forward to getting his perspectives on the topic. Tuck, welcome to the lounge. Oh, very glad to be here. Thank you. Tuck, undoubtedly, I'm sure many of our listeners will be thinking, I don't need to worry about AI. That's a problem for my tech department or my CTO or CDO to solve. So why is this such a big misconception that we see across C-suites today? Emma, I think that's a, a great and timely question. Um, we have many of our clients uh, asking kind of who should own AI. And the answer I think is everyone should own AI. And the reason is that this is not about um, kind of technology, but end-to-end business transformation. And that's not a solo endeavor. So of course you need the CEO and the leadership team and the board uh, to work together on a new direction for the company. But if you're a functional leader in the business, it's important you think about not just how AI changes what you do, but how you do it. So if you're a marketer, how do you think about getting more closely connected to the customer? You know, kind of an HR leader to me really needs to create kind of a learning organization and new skill sets. It's really incumbent on everyone in the organization to think about how do you use these new tools in your day-to-day work and, uh, and be doing so in kind of a modern way. Exactly that, Tuck. AI transformation is a collective challenge for leaders to solve. It's not about the success of an individual function in this area, but it's about organizational wide success. And this is why it has to be a priority area for every CEO. I think it's very different to the digital transformation we would talk about 15 to 20 years ago when a new app is being rolled out and a certain department can own it develop it and then roll it out seamlessly across the organization. And it should work end to end. AI is iterative. It can do some things really well, but there are lots of things it can't do so well because it's working on predictive technology and large language models. And so we have to educate each other constantly on what it's getting better at and what the pitfalls are, what we need to be wary of. I recently spoke to one of my colleagues, Fawad Bajwa, leadership advisor and global AI practice leader at Russell Reynolds Associates, about this. And he was clear that AI transformation starts with the CEO. He said, unlike the role of digital transformation, where you may have had someone you delegated it to, the responsibility of AI transformation lands squarely on your lap as CEO. I think that's such an important lesson to remember. We'd now like to welcome Dana Landis, another one of our leadership advisors from the San Francisco office, into the conversation. Dana, welcome to the lounge. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So Dana, what about other leaders across the organization who don't sit on the C-suite? What role do they play? Well, I think it's important to understand that any big transformation, especially AI, um, which is a really new disruptive technology, um, has to start at the top. But the other layers of the organization are also really, really important. And that's because the change will really come from the people in the organization at all levels. And so to really help people kind of lean into the change, to bring experimental mindset, to be open and curious to what that might look like, um, requires that managers allow for that kind of experimentation and exploration. It also means that they're giving time and space to try things out, to try and fail, 
um, to get a little relief from, you know, sort of immediate deliverables. It's about creating space for people to cross team, to experiment, to think big. Um, and that takes some of the pressure off and that allows people to really lean into the change and see what's possible. And I think your point, Dana, about giving people that breathing space to be creative and think outside of the box is so critical. I also think it's really important to create time and space for agile working sessions where leaders can share learnings about the technology and what is and isn't possible. And a quote that I read that ties really nicely to this point was from Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella. He shared that to succeed in the ever-developing tech world, one needs to stay humble, stay hungry, and exhibit a growth mindset. To succeed in AI, you need to have an appetite for continuous learning and experimentation. You need to be comfortable admitting that you don't know at all. As we've mentioned, it's hugely important to blend a dual approach of top-down mandates with a culture of experimentation. The problem that our Global Leadership Monitor found is that only 35% of leaders agree that their organisation has forward-thinking leadership who align resources to harness the power of AI. That sounds like a huge amount of missed opportunities to me. Dana, what skills are important to hone to help leaders unleash the potential of AI? One is around understanding the markets, the financials, um, you know, how things are changing out there, ability to see around corners, lean into ambiguity. But you also have to think about the people's system because you're leading an organization through a change curve and you've got to bring people along with you. And it's important to understand there's a lot of change fatigue in the system. There's a lot of anxiety and fear. This is a really disruptive technology and people are uncertain about where this is headed. And so leaders who are able to address that and offer a real vision and some clarity about where this is all headed helps to unleash some of that interest, curiosity, um, energy from the rest of the organization. And if you tie that vision to something that people can understand and get behind and rally around and align around, it's much more powerful. One you know, CEO we're working with really tied the AI revolution into revolutionizing their customer service and customer experience. This is something that people can get behind. They understand that direction. And then it's easier for them to understand what their role is in helping to shape that future. So there's, a, there's an anchoring to a longer term vision and a vision that's meaningful to other people and a willingness to be flexible about how you get to that end. And that's where we see a lot of tech transformations fail, when leaders are unable to bring the entire organization along on the change journey. The leaders who would do well are those who understand that effectively managing change is one of the key skills for successful AI transformation. Beyond this, we also know skills like adaptability and curiosity are incredibly important. These capabilities form part of our AI quotient framework, which measures whether organizations have transformation-ready leaders at the helm. We'd now like to welcome Dan Cullen, Leadership Advisor from Russell Reynolds Associates Singapore office. Dan, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. So Dan, often we think about AI in the context of technology adoption and implementation in a business. But what many leaders are learning is that first and foremost, AI is a leadership issue. Can you explain why? Transformation is much more about humans than it is about technology. Over time, technology is going to completely transform the way companies run, potential for growth, new revenue streams, and bring operational efficiencies. But it also provokes significant issues related to disintermediation and business risk. Leaders need to navigate this, and the time the markets provide to senior leadership for managing this navigation is shortening. AI won't be actually a quick fix. It will involve significant longer-term planning and cost, not necessarily immediate cost savings. And therefore, change management skills are critical. We know change management isn't easy. It takes time. It takes proper stewardship. And one CEO we spoke to on the topic of AI said, at the end of the day, business is about people. If you think about AI as a change initiative on steroids and then add regulations and risk on top, it's going to be a leadership challenge. It's not an isolated technology challenge. Yeah, you're right, Dan. And I do think that's why this moment can feel overwhelming for many leaders. And frankly, everybody's on a learning curve. I'd like to now turn back to you, Tuck. We recently held several AI leadership lab roundtables with high-profile CEOs who shared how they were embracing AI. 
What do you think are the benefits for leaders if they're successful in capitalizing on the potential of AI? So I think clients are beginning to see the huge potential benefits of AI on their business, but it's early. And we've recently held 10 CEO events on the topic of AI and leadership. And we've talked to CEOs across industry sectors from consumer to healthcare to financial services. And in consumer, we're hearing stories around how you can create kind of content and marketing in a fraction of the time with much more impact. We're hearing in healthcare, for example, how do you accelerate and automate kind of claim processing in ways that really is more efficient and saves money. So there's real use cases of these productivity improvements. And when you think about promoting team productivity, we've recently done some research that shows that 74% of leaders are excited about the potential for those near-term productivity impacts. What I think we're excited about from a leadership transformation perspective is the data also shows that 58% of leaders believe that AI has the potential to create new revenue streams. So there's a really interesting um, recent research piece by BCG on HBS looking at the impact of AI on knowledge workers. And they took a group of BCG consultants and the group that used AI in their work were 25% faster and completed 12% more tasks than those that were not using AI. That's a meaningful, meaningful difference in, in productivity and output. What I found particularly interesting with this study, Tech, is that significant improvements were recorded at all ability levels. So even those who used AI who were deemed high performers were much faster and more efficient. So, Tuck, we've looked at the benefits that AI can provide. Which areas, if any, does AI fall down on? If you look at this BCG and HBS study, um, it showed that in the area of kind of complex tasks, such as triangulation of complex data, things that need a lot of interpretation, there's really still an important need for a human overlay. From my perspective, I really like the language that kind of Microsoft's using in describing AI as a co-pilot for your business. I really think of how leaders supercharge their own capabilities and integrate kind of AI into their daily activities to be more efficient and accelerate impact. And I think that's something leaders need to keep front of mind. I think it's important for teams to connect on AI regularly to share what they have found about its capabilities and its limitations. For example, in that study you referenced, yes, there are huge productivity improvements, but for tasks that were outside the frontier of AI capabilities, but where the consultants were unaware, they used AI and actually it was 19 percentage points less likely to produce the correct solutions compared to those without AI. So we are still really quite ignorant as to what AI can and cannot do well. And learning collaboratively, working collectively as teams is absolutely critical to try and solve for some of this. When thinking about the topic of this episode, I listened back to last year's Redefiners episode with Microsoft Vice Chair and President Brad Smith, and his point on AI and the need for human overlay really resonated with me. He shared that AI beats humans, but humans and AI beats AI. I think that was a really impactful statement for leaders to bear in mind. And for any listeners who haven't yet listened to this episode, you can find a link to it in our show notes. I'd like now to talk a little bit about why some leaders aren't taking action when it comes to AI. When we asked leaders where they were in their AI implementation journey as part of our Global Leadership Monitor research, one in three leaders stated that they hadn't taken any steps to implement generative AI. We've seen what happens when organisations fail to act. Take Blockbuster. They were an organisation that failed to pivot when streaming technology changed how consumers access media, which ultimately led to its demise. Dan, what do you think is preventing leaders from acting? And how do leaders overcome this fear of inaction? Ultimately, AI is really complex. You're navigating risks related to privacy, to ethics, all the different legalities involved. It can make leaders stop and ponder, and frankly, it should. There is a fear of failing or making the wrong move and the worries about the implication for the business. There is certainly a lack of understanding, and we know that leaders are overwhelmed by the belief that they need to know everything but they don't. And I think that's a common misconception, Dan, that leaders need to be fluent in AI. I recently read something really impactful in a book titled A Digital Mindset, What It Takes to Thrive in the Age of Data, Algorithms and AI by Paul Leonardi and Sadal Neely. 
In the book, they share that anyone can become savvy in AI if they adopt the 30% rule from the world of linguistics. So I think this is really interesting. It's saying that if non-native speakers are to succeed in global organisations, they only need to know 30% of the words that native speakers use. And they believe that the same goes for AI. You don't need to be an expert, but to succeed, you do need to have 30% fluency in a handful of technical topics to develop a digital mindset. And having a digital mindset is so important for every member of your organisation, not just the CEO or C-suite. So we've almost reached the end of the episode. But while I have you here in the lounge, I wanted to ask you all one last question. You're speaking to global leaders every day who are experimenting with AI. Based on these conversations, what single piece of advice would you offer to leaders embarking on their AI transformation journey? Dana, let's get your perspective first. I think it's really important to think about what problem you're trying to solve and have some focus there. Um, It isn't that you sort of bring AI in across the organization If you identify a place where AI can really help unlock some efficiencies or, you know, shift the business, that's a great place to start. And it helps people understand how this works, what the impact might look like, and get them thinking about where else this can be applied. And Dan, what about you? You need courage and bravery to reimagine the longer term of your business. You need top talent in your C suite who can work together to quickly answer, pivot, and build but also stay the course on the transformation agenda. And finally, Tuck, what's your advice? There's so much noise around AI right now. I think it'd be really easy to dismiss this as a fad or a thing. And I think that's a big mistake. I think uh, at whatever level in the organization you're in, you can help chart the, the path forward in a new way for the company, or you can be kind of one of those early adopter leaders on the team that really, really will make things happen. So My advice would be embrace the moment. Thank you to all of you for sharing your perspectives with us today. So our time in the lounge has come to an end. In 30 seconds, this is what we've learned. AI transformation is more about humans than technology. It takes proper stewardship and it takes time. AI isn't a solo endeavor. Everyone in an organization is accountable for AI and its progress. The most successful organizations are those that give employees the breathing space from their day-to-day deliverables to experiments. And you don't need to be fluent in AI, but you do need to have a base level of understanding to succeed. And that goes for your entire organization. If you have any topics or burning questions you'd like us to cover in future episodes of Leadership Lounge, then get in touch. Email your questions to redefiners at russellreynolds.com. You can find us on LinkedIn and follow us on X at RRA on Leadership. You can also find us on Instagram at Redefiners Podcast. And you can also now subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, goodbye.